In this video, I will be building this weathered 1968 Volkswagen Beetle diorama. So, just let's get into it. This is a skill level 4, and it's also a 124th scale model kit. This part, this has 131 parts in it, and it is molded in white. Here's all the collars for the stock box build. Here's the other side of the box that demonstrates the engine and the interior and the rear of the vehicle. This box is not ceram wrapped like most of them because it has like these four pieces of tape that holds it together. Here's what it first looks like when you open the box. That's not a nick, it's just a piece of hair or something. Here's everything that's included in the model kit. This model has a lot of parts to it. This is a highly detailed model kit. It's a really, really nice model kit. Here's the decals. Some really nice decals. And I love Ravel's instruction manual. They're so nice. Always laid out really nice. Here I'm just flipping through all the pages. Here I'm just taking the tack cloth and getting any kind of hair or dust that is on the model before primer. I'm using this Badger Stun Arrest Primer. I highly recommend this stuff. It's fantastic. One of the best primers I've used. And I also have different colors you can get. I'm using the Iwata Eclipse airbrush here. Here I'm just priming the model. Before this clip, I already put one coat of primer on here, so this is the second coat. Only, I had two coats of primer. I'm building this kit into a diorama, like a weathered diorama. But I enjoy building the model kit as well, so I always build the model kits when I'm building dioramas. Even though it's gonna be, a lot of it's going to be hitting, because I just enjoy it. Here I'm using the craft paint, a red craft paint. But I changed this color multiple times. It happened, it turned out to be red, but I didn't like red. I mean, this paint actually turned out pretty good, but I didn't like the redness. And then I stripped it four different times. And I just got sick of it and painted it blue. I really didn't know what color I wanted. I was just trying different out, trying out different colors. Here I'm just adding little decals to the coil and the fan. These, car, these Volkswagens was air-cooled, so they didn't have no radiator. I like adding little details like this to just make everything stand out a little better. I'm just using a toothpick to add the little bolts to paint the top of the bolt heads. This, a toothpick is what I use most of the time for fine details. It works really well. Here I'm putting the intake and carburetor on. And I add in just little de details here and there. We've warped ahead a little while so I get the whole engine's complete. 
I'm just adding some touch up paint for details and whatnot. Kind of crazy how just small little details makes it pop out so much better and look more realistic. I'm using Amo of MIG Blood Red to paint the distributor. And I'm painting a part of it gold. That's what it was like in real life. A lot of these was not red, but a lot of them also was red, the distributors. I'm taking, making a black wash here. I just took some acrylic paint and diluted it. And now I'm just on dry brush over the transmission and the bottom of the engine here. This was boxer engine, so the piece that sticks out on both sides is actually the heads. I'm adding some pale silver acrylic metallic paint here. I'm just doing the same as John Dry brush it on. These uh, craft acrylics makes uh, actually work really well and make things uh, look more realistic. Here I'm putting the heat shield on the heater boxes. Yeah, these are not the exhaust. I'll just put that on. That's actually the heater boxes. I'm using a aluminum paint for a base coat. I'm going to be adding some weathering to these, some rust and whatnot to make them look rusty. But I'm using the aluminum base coat first. And I'm using the Vallejo Rust Stain and Streaking Kit. Comes with all the rusty colors you need. And also tell, it comes with instruction manual on how to use them. I actually don't go by the, all the instructions. I just use the like I use the colors out of them. But there's also instructions on how to use these the proper way. I like to start with like a medium dark base, and then go lighter, and then go back to a little darker, and then go back to light. So it gives it different layers of different colors doing doing the weathering part on the model is the funnest part to me i really enjoy adding different layers and you get to see the finished product when it gets done like it starts at nothing then after you add a you know different layers of paint it becomes you know old looking or stuff like that that's what i really enjoy I'm adding a wash all over it, a rusty wash. It gives it more of a realistic look. I'm not trying to go out for like a rusty, like a really rusty look, like ate up of rust. Just kind of like it heat cycled, you know, a bunch of times. Because even if a car has 5,000 miles after it heat cycles, it will start getting rust and exhaust if it's not a stainless steel exhaust. I 
visual it looks like so far. Then I'm going to add a black wash to it. Just trying to get all the all the, all the paint off my paintbrush there. As you can see how different already looks by adding the black. Here's what it looks like. Looks pretty good to me. I added the engine to the chassis. I have to paint the wheel wells in the suspension parts. And also the subframe. I'm just painting these matte black paint everything matte black and I'll go back and add the colors I like like gloss and whatnot but I usually leave the wheel wells matte black it's so satisfying to watch this paint go on I actually should have painted this in my paint booth, but I tried to take the lazy way out. Just paint right here on my work desk and I had a little difficulties. Sometimes the easier way out is not always the answer. As you can see, I got blood across my desk. I take olive green and add it to black. It's like a, maybe like a 50-50 mixture. And it turns to like almost like an olive drab color. And I spray the bottom of my model cars with these. It gives it like a, it kind of breaks up like the matte black color and adds a little like used color to it. Like it's been, you know, not, it's been taken care of, but you know, a little dirty, dusty. You don't want to spray a whole bunch of on this on there, just like miscoat it. I really like the look it goes, it gives it. Some people may not. I think it looks like it's been driving and gets like dust and stuff under there but it's not like coated in dirt or you know grease or anything like that like i said even though i'm making this a weathered diorama you'll never see the bottom of this because i'm putting a tarp over it so i still love to build these models even though i'm going to cover it up as you can see that's what the look it gave it it looks more a little bit different and person is not as light here's my kids toy he want me to airbrush it and you can say no to airbrushing your kids toy I'm adding the subframe here And I'm using a Model Masters Gloss Black to paint all the suspension parts and also the subframe. There's just too much matte on here as I need to get some gloss.
him just popping in the wheels to the tires. They go on very easy. Here I'm painting the dash. I usually like, I really love to paint the dashes, but on this dash, I really didn't like to paint it. It came with decals for the dash, and I turned out horrible for me. And after that, I was over it. I didn't want to do nothing with the dash, but I added some more details. As you can see, the gauge cluster is really messed up. The decal did not want to stick. So it just like got wrinkled up and stuff. This kit also comes with a um, hood hinge. I call this the hook as the engine's back there, but it came already in the kit, so that's really cool. I'm just using Elmer's white glue to glue in the glass windows. I like to use this and because it works really well and you can wipe it off if you go on the glass. I'm doing a little sloppy job here because I'm building a diorama. It's not going to be perfect because it's going to be covered up, but I still enjoy doing that. I also built the interior, painted it. And I also added carpet, which is more fl flocking. Here's a dash, I'm putting it in. This part had a little trouble fitting here. The interior part didn't want to fit to the chassis, but there's a little finessing and it, it worked. And I how the trunk is all open like that, so I, I will glue the um, trunk closed. I'm using a glass case here to make the base of the diorama. I can use some brown paint and some primer. Apply the primer so the paint will st stick to it. I add the paint to the bottom. Here's I had I already have a tutorial on how to make this mud. It's actually really mud, but I'll link the card right now in case you want to check that out. But it's just mud, real mud, like dirt and white glue. If you want to go check that video out, it's right here right now. Click at the top. And you have about like 25 minutes of working time with this stuff. Depends how much glue you add. And it dries rock hard. And just even it all out. This is a dirty process. So you better put some kind of paper towel or paper or something down from your desk. This stuff is hard to get off once it dries. Here I've just got filtered some rocks from outside and that's what I'm using here. I'm picking out the big rocks that's out of scale. And when the mud dries here, the mud will act like a glue and hold all the rocks into place. These rocks will not fall off. I mean a few may, but like... Just glues them into place. This is a cheap base and it works really well. Here I'm making the tarp, I'm using the copy paper. I'm just crumbling it up to give it a distressed de de look. Just wrinkle it all up. This is just like regular copy paper. I cut it to the size that I want. And I take a 50% water and 50% white glue and completely wet this paper and soak it. Soak it down. Make sure all the whole paper is wet. My spray bottles have been a piece of crap, so I'm gonna finish off with using this paintbrush. And I take the paper and drape it over the car. And I try to take a paintbrush and just push it toward to the car and then I cut it 
to what how I like it. I don't want the whole car covered up. And I tear around it so they ain't like it perfectly cut. Which it looks, you know, more old and ragged. I take a toothpick and do some weathering on it. I add some distress marks and holes and tears and stuff like that. Here's what it looks like so far. Take a blue paint here that kind of matches the tarp collar blue and airbrush it. I tried to paint this on by hand with a brush, and you can see on the side there, but I hate how it turned out, so I switched to the airbrush. The airbrush does a so much better job at, it, at this. This is what it looks like after two coats of blue paint. I also show how to make this and I'll link to the video right here but this is just chalk pastel just chalk pastels like artists use and I grind it up but this is that's just what I use to get the dirt and I added also two tires to the top of this as you can see there I just super glue them but I have a video on how to make these there's not really a how-to to add the pastels to make it look, you know, grimy and dirty. I just add, start from like a medium dark color and then go to light and man, there's really no how-to. Just to your likings. I'm taking Spanish moss and just cut it to little tiny pieces. To make it look like when the wind blows, like you some grass clippings and stuff like that. As you can see, I cut this really fine. I just want to sprinkle all over the whole model. And just shake the excess off and the little bits and pieces will stay. As you can see. That's what it looks like. As you can tell, little bits and pieces like pollen and stuff like in real life. Make it look like. I'm just adding like greens, blacks, browns, just all different types of colors here. Just do it to how you like it. Because the look I'm going for may not be the same look you're going for. But I really enjoyed this build, it's been really fun. This is the first diorama I have ever built, so I've been wanting to try it, and I'm glad I did. I'm just trying to blend in some of the powders there, so it looks like it's actually powder, so it just looks more worn. I'll just sprinkle a bunch of different powders. Make it look like dirt and dirt and stuff like that has ran down it. And I airbrush, I paint the wheels black and I'm airbrush the espresso brown to make it look a little more rusty and worn, more worn. That's all I'm doing here. I also take some more of the pigment I made here and add it to the base of the diorama to give it some more depth. As you can see, this has helped a lot. I'm just adding like little light browns and um, blacks on top of that. As you can see, it enhanced the look of this that this base a lot just by doing something so simple. I went for like a this car's been sitting in the driveway for a really long time. Like I said, it was a forgotten project. 
He's just spinning around of it. I can't want it like rusty and worn. I just wanted it to like it's been sitting for a really long time. And I really love how this turned out. So leave it in the comments if you like this. But it's been really fun. If you never build a diorama, go ahead and give it a try. There's the engine of it, clean, because it's a brand new engine in it, you know, and just been setting ever since. Thanks for watching.